Lara Favoretto's Momentary Monument, the library, is, as it sounds, a monumental project. She has brought together nearly 2,500 books from across Edinburgh that have been donated by bookshops and by individuals that were destined for destruction and inserted them with images from her own private collection. These are all now part of this monument that she calls the library and visitors are invited to come into the gallery, experience the monument and then essentially become a part of it by taking a book of their choice and aiding its dispersal across the city. The library is part of a larger series of momentary monuments that Lara has made around the world, from a, a temporary swamp made outside the Arsenale in Venice, a sort of cemetery for missing personalities, to the stone, a very large block of dark Indian granite hollowed out on the inside with a, a slot for donations for a humanitarian cause, different depending on where she's installing it, or the dump, a, a landscape of scrap metal within Documenta 13 and the wall, a gigantic looming wall of sandbags that forms a sort of irregular, incomplete ruin which she raised up around a monument to Dante Alighieri in, in Trento. In our iconic Georgian gallery, Cho Jutsie has produced a whole new body of work on scrolls and paintings that he's made specifically for our galleries here in Edinburgh. Visitors are going to be invited to grab a UV torch from one of our friendly volunteer information assistants. And you'll discover, hidden on these scrolls of Cho Jutsie, translations of phrases such as only seek battle after the victory has been won, or iron fist inside a velvet glove. So these are from the new Art of War series that he's just completed, with many of the phrases drawn from the 2,000-year-old text, The Art of War of Sun Tzu. On other paintings and scrolls downstairs, you'll read about empire, wonderland, free trade zone, while upstairs, in a really unique and unusual explosion of colour for Cho Jutsie, we have the Colour Experiment series, informed by remote sensing technology that represents data related to structures or terrains, bodies, weather systems through bright colour images. They're used to predict the weather and monitor natural disasters, but they're also heavily employed to support various military operations. All of these paintings and the scrolls have been produced by Chu, especially for our galleries, and it really is a tremendous honour to see them hanging there, resonating against the architectural history of William Henry Playfair's building. That was actually the context we originally conceived of these shows. The paper reliefs, lit by a naked bulb on the floor, were imagined to feel something like an archaeological dig, as though the buildings, icons and species that Cho Jutsie has fashioned through another ancient form of paper moulding could remind us of ancient relics or of monuments unearthed. Abraham Abraham Sarah Sarah is a diptych, it's actually a two-channel work, which is installed in a way that the viewer has to constantly move their heads in order to choose sides or to choose a video they're looking. When they're choosing the video, they're actually choosing spaces, different spaces. They're looking into a mosque or they're looking into a synagogue. The work depicts the evacuation of each side in order to give the other religion the space to pray in. In the work Ishmael, we see another protocol in which the Muazin is actually escorted through the synagogue area in order to call for prayer. When the space was divided, the area where the Muazin calls from has been left in the Jewish side. And again, this is an arrangement that was established after the massacre, displaying a certain kind of absurd choreography that was created in order to protect a Muslim entering a synagogue from another massacre happening. Both of these works function as a theatre of an absurd, something that displays a kind of a bureaucratic Kafkaesque system which repeats itself to no end. It's a tamed bureaucracy that controls, but it of course cannot solve anything. As always, Edinburgh College of Art, the University of Edinburgh and Creative Scotland have partnered 
to make these exhibitions free for everybody and everyone is always welcome at Talbot Rice Gallery.